Hi, I'm Kay Warren. I'd like to walk you through my favorite portion of scripture found in Exodus, the tabernacle in the wilderness. After 400 years of slavery in Egypt, God led the Israelites to freedom. Shortly after, God invited Moses to spend time with him on Mount Sinai. On the mountain, God gave Moses two systems for his people. First, he gave a system of law. God gave detailed instructions for moral, ceremonial, and spiritual laws, the most well-known being the Ten Commandments. God knew the Israelites would break his laws, so at the same time, he gave a system of sacrifice that would allow the sins of the people to be covered and make it possible for them to be in a relationship with him. God's next instruction to Moses was to house the system of law and the system of sacrifice in a sacred, set-apart place called a tabernacle where God promised to live among his people. The tabernacle was built right in the heart of the Israelite camp at the base of Mount Sinai. While the pagan nations around them had gods of wood, stone, and clay, Israel had a personal God who wanted to be a part of their daily lives. The first thing you would see as you approached the tabernacle was a sparkling white linen fence. The fence was high enough that no one could climb over it and firm enough at the bottom that no one could crawl under it. The only way into the tabernacle was through a brightly embroidered gate. The white fence said, stay away. But the gate said, come in, but come in this way. Jesus is like the fence, pure, holy, spotless, and he is the gate. He provides us the only way into a relationship with God. The tabernacle is divided into three parts, the outer court, the holy place, and the holy of holies. In the outer court, there were two articles used in worship, a large bronze altar where animal sacrifices were offered, and a large bronze basin called a laver, where the priests washed their hands and feet before offering the sacrifices to God. At the bronze altar, an Israelite would bring a spotless animal to be sacrificed, but before it was killed, he would put his hands on the head of the animal and confess his sin. There were many prescribed rituals in how the animals were slaughtered and what was done with them afterwards, but the most important part was that an innocent animal gave its life for the sin of a person. Jesus gave his life for us on the cross. He was an innocent lamb who voluntarily gave up his life to make us right with a holy God. The next thing you would see is the bronze laver. Only the priests used the laver, and it was made from the mirrors of the women of Israel. There was nothing special about the water, but it served a practical purpose to clean their hands and feet. It also signified that they were sanctified, set apart for God's use. The labor illustrates to us how the Word of God cleanses us to be set apart for His service. The next thing you would see is the tabernacle building, which contained the holy place and the holy of holies. Only the priests were allowed in the holy place, and only the high priest was allowed in the holy of holies. As you entered the holy place, there was a very large, beautiful golden lampstand that was beaten out of one piece of gold. It provided the only light in the holy place. Jesus said in John 8:12, I am the light of the world. He provides the illumination to our minds so that we can get to know God. On the right, there was a small wooden table covered with gold. It held 12 loaves of bread that the priests ate on the Sabbath. The 12 loaves represented the 12 tribes of Israel who were different in number and strength, but on this table they were equal before God. Jesus said in John 6:48, I am the bread of life. If anyone eats of this bread, he will live forever. Jesus is the bread that sustains us. The golden altar of incense was a small altar that was used just for burning incense. The sweet smell filled the holy place with a fragrance that pleased God. When the high priest would go into the Holy of Holies, he would carry a burning coal of incense in with him. The altar is representative of prayer, and our prayers are to be offered to God at all times through Jesus Christ. The sweet smell of His fragrance is to permeate our lives. There was a thick, embroidered veil that separated the holy place from the Holy of Holies. Once a year, on the Day of Atonement, the high priest was allowed to go behind this veil and into God's presence. At the moment Jesus died on the cross, the veil in the temple in Jerusalem was torn from the top to the bottom by God's hand, indicating there was no longer any barrier between God and man. In the Holy of Holies, there were two pieces of furniture, the Ark of the Covenant and the Mercy Seat. 
The Ark of the Covenant was a wooden box covered with gold that held the stone tablets of the Ten Commandments, a pot of manna, and Aaron's rod that budded. The Ark was a place of safety in Scripture, and this Ark contained Israel's most valuable treasures. The mercy seat was a golden lid with two cherubim that fit on the top of the Ark. The cherubim were symbols of God's judgment. The lid came between a holy God and the broken law contained in the ark. On the Day of Atonement, the high priest would sprinkle blood from a sacrificial lamb on the mercy seat, and then God's presence would fill the Holy of Holies, indicating that all of the nation's sins would be covered for one more year. The Bible calls Jesus Christ our mercy seat. The Bible says because of his death on the cross, his blood was the once-for-all sacrifice that finally made salvation possible. God has mercy on us because of Jesus. No longer are our sins covered for a year at a time, but finally forgiven. There is no need for further sacrifices. The temporary purpose of the tabernacle was to establish God as the true God, unlike the gods of the pagan cultures around the Israelites. And the eternal purpose of the tabernacle was to point to Jesus Christ as the fulfillment of God's plan of salvation, not just a temporary sacrifice, but the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Now every person who puts their faith in Jesus Christ is reconciled to God. We become tabernacles, dwelling places for God, with all access to Him forever.